Advanced Accounting 17C Intercompany Upstream Transaction, a sale of equipment for a game. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, and the website. One of the things I mentioned when I discussed consolidations is that it doesn't matter if it's an upstream or a downstream transaction, you still have the same basic elimination entries. So that's something to keep in mind. So this is an intercompany upstream equipment sale for a game. So on May 1st, year 8, subcompany subsidiary sells to the parent, which is upstream, sub to parent, a piece of machinery for $120,000. The carrying amount on the sub's books is only $90,000. And they put in parentheses that that's net of $10,000 accumulated depreciation. Six-year remaining life, no residual value. So that gives you an idea of data for depreciation. One of the things that you have to deal with with equipment sales as opposed to inventory sales between, between entities in consolidation, you have to handle an elimination of depreciation when you have a transaction with assets that depreciate versus inventory, which is an asset that doesn't. The parties adopt a straight line method of depreciation for the machinery that's sold. The parent owns 80% of the sub's outstanding stock. So this should be, this is from a question that a student sent to me. So parent owns 80% of sub's outstanding common equity. What that means is that there is a non-controlling interest involved, which I touch on in the question a little bit. Okay, so on the buyer's books, which is the parent, which includes the parent and the non-controlling interest, we debit to increase an account called equipment. That's the cost to the parent. And we'll assume that the parent paid cash. That's the parent's journal entry when they buy the equipment. The seller, on the other hand, receives cash debit to increase cash, removes an asset called equipment by crediting, and they take $90,000 off the books, which is the carrying amount net of the $10,000 accumulated depreciation. That is the book value they take off the books. Now that would be two entries because it would be the original cost of the equipment net of the accumulated depreciation, but we shortcutted it here and just said, we're gonna take the carrying amount off the books by crediting and we're reducing an account called equipment. To make debits equal credits, we need a $30,000 credit, and that happens to be gain on sale. If we needed a debit to balance, that would be a loss on sale. So debits equal credits, and you can see that I put a formula in to add those up. What I do next is I break it out between parent and sub, so you can see that. This is the balance sheet before consolidation. <clears throat> the parent, that's the 80% owner, gets 80% of that $120,000 amount. If you go up to E10, you'll see the $120,000 right there. So 80% of that transaction goes to the parents, so we increase equipment 96000 on their books, and they paid 96000 So I said that's the parents' equipment, and that equipment account is overstated when we consolidate, and we'll get to the reasons why in a minute. The non-controlling interest that owns 20% of the sub, they get 20% of the 100, you can see the formula up here, of the 120000 or $24,000, NCI, the non-controlling interest equipment account, is also overstated, and we'll see why in a minute. And then as a check figure, I add up both equipment accounts to show you that the total debit to equipment is $120,000, which is the amount that's mentioned in the question. Now let's look at depreciation. And what I usually do to get this straightened out is I always, off to the left, point out, do we have less than a year that we need to depreciate in the question? If you'll notice, the question dealt with May 1st, which means only uh, 
We're only depreciating from May 1st until the end of the year because the transaction took place on May 1st. So what you'll see over to the right here is, is that I calculate depreciation for eight months worth from May 1st until 1231, and then I depreciate for future years an entire year. So in consolidation, we have an issue because the buyer has the asset on the books at 120000 the seller only the carrying amount at 90000 Since the values of the assets are different, the annual depreciation, assuming a six-year life, is also different. So we just take the asset value divided by six. The buyer is depreciating at 20000 Asset value divided by six. The seller is depreciating, depreciating, excuse me, <clears throat> need to fix that, at $15,000. So the difference is $5,000. Now, if I just take eight twelfths worth, you can see that 8 twelfths of the 20 is 13,333. 8 twelfths of the 15 is 10,000. There's a difference of 3,333. So, because the asset is overstated on the buyer's books, the annual depreciation is overstated in brown, and 8 months of that annual depreciation is 33,333. So, again, the asset is overstated, so depreciation is overstated in consolidation only. So, <clears throat> excuse me if I, I'm going to relink this, but the uh, depreciation annually would be, if I go back to the right here, I'm going to link it. There's the 20,000 annual depreciation on the buyer's books. The buyer would be depreciating twenty thousand a year, and adding that to accumulated depreciation, the contra asset account. So we need to make an entry for year eight, which again is only eight months worth. I don't know where I picked this up, but I think this is a, an easy way to look at it with the sale and the income statement impact without the sale. So net income impact with the sale and without the sale. So with the sale, there's a $30,000 gain we need to remove. Here's the depreciation amount with the sale. This is the depreciation on the um, parents on the buyer's books. So there's the net impact on, there's the impact on net income. Now, without the sale, I'm going to change the link here. Let me undo that. Go back up here and link some stuff together. If we didn't do the sale at all, and the we need eight months worth of depreciation on the seller's books, there we go. So, assuming we sell the asset, the buyer's eight months of depreciation is 13,333. Assuming we don't sell the asset and the seller keeps it, the seller's depreciation is $10,000, which is all expense. No gain on sale. If we don't sell it, we use the seller's old depreciation. The net impact to income is a $10,000 expense, no income. With the sale, $30,000 gain, less eight months of the higher depreciation, 16667, increase to income. The difference between those two numbers is 26667. So the adjustment I would need to make would be to debit or reduce net income, 26667. So the entry, the journal entry to consolidate would be, we're going to debit net income as we just saw, 26667. It's going to be a debit to reduce net income. The credit is to credit equipment because the equipment is overstated by 26667 in, in total. So that's the journal entry to get rid of eight months worth of the impact of the sale of the asset and the overstatement of depreciation. If you wanted to divide it up, 80% of that 26667 goes to the parent in blue, 
20% goes to the non-controlling interest and they add up to 26667 just so you can see how that allocation would occur. Last thing, well what if we did and we had to do consolidation in future years? Well, with the sale, $30,000 gain on sale. Let's go back up to the depreciation numbers. The annual depreciation is 20,000 for the buyer, 15,000 for the seller. So if we looked at it in terms of a whole year, with the sale, $30,000 gain, seller depreciates at a higher level, buyer, excuse me, depreciates at a higher level, the net impact is a $10,000 increase to net income. Without the sale, no gain. Seller keeps the asset, depreciates at a lower level, 15000 It's 15000 expense only. The difference between the numbers is 25000 we need a $25,000 debit to reduce net income. And you'll note that instead of debiting net income, we debit retained earnings. And the reason is, is that net income gets closed and adjusted to zero every year. So we can't go back and adjust net income for a prior year. So instead, we debit retained earnings to get rid of that net impact to net income. Debit, reduce retained earnings, and we credit to reduce equipment for the overstatement, that should say equ equipment. I'm just going to say asset overstatement, just so you can have that straightened out. If I were to divide the impact, 80% or 20,000 goes to the buyer, 20% or 20,000 goes to the non-controlling interest. So what we just did was, we saw an entry to handle eight months worth of net income impact for the first year from May 1st to 1231. And then in future years, we saw a journal entry to handle an entire year's worth of, of um, intercompany transaction because each year you would need to eliminate, again, this activity if you chose to consolidate the financials. So that's what's going on. That's as far as we'll get on, get on Accounting 17C. Here on the website, you'll see the book Cost Accounting for Dummies is now available. You'll also find on the website our subscriber-only newsletter that I send out once a month that takes current news and business and finance, and we make it into subscriber-only content. You can find that and go on this page to get the monthly newsletter. And finally, I teach the toughest accounting courses in small group sessions. Here are the topics that I teach on, and you can join the 90-minute session, and here's the cost, and get go to this page, toughest accounting courses, to find out how to join our classes. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.